All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It looks as though we have most folks logged in now. Uh, we might have a few people uh, joining a little late, and that's perfectly fine. We'll go ahead and get started. My name is Stephanie Reyes, and I'm the Manager of Business Intelligence Products at JCA. So first off, I just want to say thank you all for uh, taking time out of your day to join me for today's webinar. Um, we're going to be talking about JCA answers for the razor's edge. And today I'll be showing you our business intelligence product that gives you beautiful dashboards and powerful reporting for the razor's edge. Um, so before we get too far along, a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, in case you haven't already noticed, I've muted uh, everyone's line just to minimize background noise. Um, but if you do have a comment or a question that comes up along the way, you should see a little uh, kind of chat Q&A box there in the WebEx, and you can feel free to send comments and questions to me, and I'll certainly get to them as I'm able. So. We've got a half hour today, so let me just give you a quick idea of what we're going to do in that time. Um, I'm going to spend the bulk of our time together showing you the dashboards for the Razor's Edge so that you'll actually get to see them. Uh, but before we get there, I'll tell you a little bit about JCA in case some of you all don't know about our company um, or our Razor's Edge expertise. Um, I'll share a little bit about why there's a need for something like uh, JCA Answers. I'll give you a few highlights. Um, a very brief, non-super technical overview of what's included, and then we're going to go ahead and dive right in. Um, I'll leave a few minutes at the end for Q&A, and certainly if there are lots of questions, I can stay on a little longer. Um, but I'll save the bulk of what we're doing today for an actual demo. And as I said a second ago, any questions, any comments that come up along the way, please go ahead and submit them in that chat box, um, and I will uh, take care of them at the end. So let's get started. Well, I mean, first off, the most important thing I think for you all to know about JCA is that we're no stranger to nonprofits. We've worked solely with nonprofit organizations for the last 26 years. And most of the staff at JCA, myself included, used to work at a nonprofit in some capacity. So whether that's development, finance, operations, IT. Um, personally, I used to um, manage a Razor's Edge database, so share many of the struggles and headaches that you all may find yourselves grappling with. Um, so as a company, we've got quite the roster, and that kind of work experience definitely brings with it tremendous realistic knowledge about what nonprofits need and the, the practical challenges that are out there. Um, we also know the system used by nonprofits really well, Razor's Edge included. So, again, for myself, I've been working with the Razor's Edge for, oh, 12 or so years. Um, so as a company, when you combine all of that knowledge with the technical know-how that our engineers bring to the table, you've got a really great combination. Uh, in addition, we're also a recognized technology partner by Blackbaud. So we have that partnership built out with them. So why would you need a separate business intelligence tool for the Razor's Edge? You've already done all this work and spent all this money to put Razor's Edge in place. Why on earth would you need something else? I mean, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that Razor's Edge is a system that's designed to put data into it. So the goal is to get all that constituent and gift and membership and prospect rating data into your data database, but the goal isn't necessarily to get it out. You know, it's to be able to store all of that info in your system. And Razor's Edge has a pretty decent query tool, but we've found that for a lot of our clients, most people are still resorting to some version of a manual process that involves running a big query, exporting it, dumping it into Excel, doing some manual manipulation, and all of that is just, it's just time consuming. And, you know, the minute you export that data, it's static, let alone the opportunity for error that, that's out there. So, I mean, the key takeaway is that Razor's Edge isn't designed for real business intelligence. It does a lot of other things really well, but BI isn't the goal. 
So that's where Answers comes in, and it's really what we bring to the table. Our JCA Answers product is all about getting data out and helping you become more data-driven. So a few quick highlights about our product. Again, it's built specifically for nonprofits. So when you think about things like split gifts or soft credits or adjustments, these are all things that we've considered and we think about and we don't take for granted. Uh, it's a system that's built for users. And so as you'll see in a bit, business users can really easily build dashboards. They can uh, drag and drop, add filters, change how things are presented and come away with some really good-looking visualizations. Um, there's a seamless web and mobile experience, so there's no need to log into the Razor's Edge to access the dashboard. Um, as you'll see, it's powerful, it's fast, it's dynamic, um, and really it's, it's going to be the entryway into a true organization-wide BI system for your, uh, your organization. Now, I wanted to share with you a sample list of some of our Answers clients. Um, really, I think this highlights the diversity with the, the types of organizations we work with. We've got higher ed, we've got museums, we've got food banks, um, um, healthcare organizations, and they're all using Razor's Edge in slightly different ways and focused on different things, but they're all able to get what they need from JCA Answers. Now, up on the screen, I have a really, really basic image, kind of showing you the different components and walking you through uh, the process of what happens with JCA Answers. So starting on that far left, that orange cylinder represents your Razor's Edge database. So when you have JCA Answers, what we go and do is we then create a separate data warehouse database that has all of that great content that you've already stored in Razor's Edge, but when we bring it into a data warehouse, we're reformatting it, we're optimizing it so that the goal and the objective of everything we're pulling out of that data warehouse is reporting. So we've set it up in a way that's really going to give us results in a, a quick and efficient manner. Now on top of that, we built what are called data cubes, and these are what we use in our dashboards to allow us to have a way to look at gift information and proposals and actions and membership in a way where we can just drag and drop and dynamically change the view of our data um, without having to know any sort of SQL or write a custom report. Um, and we come away with really rich reporting and data visualizations that, again, it's all accessible via uh, via mobile, so whether you're looking at this on a smartphone or a tablet, um, it's all out there and available to you. Now with any BI solution, you want a system that's going to let you accomplish reporting and analytic needs across your entire organization. So you need something that's going to let you grow beyond just the razor's edge. I know folks on this call have important info coming from a finance system or maybe some separate budget spreadsheets or uh, an email system, an alumni database. There, it, it's inevitable that you're going to have multiple systems across your organization. And our platform is built in a way that allows you to add in data from those other systems. So you're not just limited to the razor's edge, rather, you're given a really um, great head start by already having Razor's Edge data in your data warehouse and then building from there. Okay, so as I promised, I was not going to do a lot of preamble because I wanted to save time for us to get to the actual demo. So now we are there. So let me jump over to a different screen here. All right. So as you see, I switched over to a web browser. So all the dashboards that we have, they're all web-based. Now the data lives on your server, it's on your network, but it's all something that you can access through a web browser. So here's our home screen. I'm just going to go ahead and log in to give you all a sense of 
kind of the entire scope of the process from the beginning. So I'll type in my email, my password, and we'll log right in. Okay, so once I've logged in, you'll see that our home screen comes up. A uh, couple things to point out, you've got a link here to all of our built-in documentation, so it's all accessible through this interface. You don't have to go to a separate file. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to expand this JCA Answers Dashboard folder, and you'll see a list of a few different dashboards showing up there. So once the Answers is installed, you automatically get these sample dashboards that just come with the system. So they're automatically loaded with your latest data from the Razor's Edge. So I'm going to use these as a way to just kind of walk through the dashboards, point out a couple of things, um, talk a little bit about what our, some of our clients are doing, and really just give, use these as a way to give you a taste of, of what our dashboards uh, can do for you. So I'm going to start with the fundraising dashboard, because I think that's the most straightforward and most of us are dealing with gift information in some capacity. So this is, um, uh, this really speaks to everyone on the call with, um, regardless of what type of organization you're with. So this comes up here. Now across the top, you'll see that I have a few widgets that show me some key numbers that I can see at a glance, and these might be things that I really want to monitor on a regular basis. I can see how much uh, revenue has come in this month versus the total amount we've raised this quarter versus uh, what I'm seeing all the way over on this far right side, the total raised year to date. And so you'll, first off, you can see that I, I can see these types of numbers in a couple of different ways. My monthly number is a straightforward number that's just showing me where I'm at. Whereas my quarterly and year-to-date numbers are um, set up using a, a gauge. Now, I, I show you it this way just to kind of show you the, the options, not to suggest that one is better than the other. Um, it really depends on kind of what you need. And with gauges, I can not only track how much has come in, but I can easily see this compared to goals. So over at the far right side of the gauge, you see the goal for each, um, each widget, so quarterly goal and a year-to-date goal. Now, one of our clients is uh, Carnegie Museums of Pittsburgh, and they've been using answers for several years. Um, and when they first started out, they had a challenge that most of their fundraising revenue comes in the last month of the year. So it's all coming in December. So throughout the course of the year, you know, they needed a way to make sure that when they're tracking how they're doing, it's accounting for that end-of-year bump they're going to get. So what they did is they set up monthly campaign goals because that made more sense for them. But most of us on this call are probably familiar with the idea that Razor's Edge only lets you track a single campaign goal. So this didn't work for Carnegie. Um, and prior to Answers, they had a bunch of spreadsheets where they were tracking these monthly goals. And so there was this very manual process each month just to be able to know how they're doing. So now what they've done in Answers is, is that they've set this up so that those monthly goals are built into Answers so that when they're looking at their dashboard and they're seeing a widget that's showing them how much they've raised um, so far this month, they're able to see how that tracks compared to their true monthly goal. So no more manual process. It's really been um, uh, uh, a really refreshing change for them. I'll scroll down a little bit more and show you in this same dashboard we can see data broken down in a number of different ways. I've got fund information, appeal information. Um, if I scroll down a little bit more, I've got some campaign information, uh, package numbers. One thing I'll point out here on the left side, you'll see that I have a map showing me 
um, the distribution of where my gifts are coming by location. And I can zoom in, move it around, and kind of play with it to really explore um, my data in this way. So rather than having to look at a static spreadsheet that shows you where gifts are coming from by a list of zip codes or states, you have this interactive map that lets you zoom in, move the map around, and um, you can hover over each of these dots to get an idea by zip code what those numbers actually are. So it's really an entirely different take on your data um, and where your gifts are coming from. I'll scroll down a little bit further, and I have a couple of examples set up to allow me to look at revenue by solicitor from a gift and also um, a line chart that lets me see how I'm pacing this year against last year. Now, on every dashboard here, you have the option of adding filters. Um, so you can add filters that apply to your entire dashboard, or you can have a filter that applies to a single individual widget. So let me show you here. If I expand this, on the right side now, you see I have a filter pane that pops up. And so on this particular dashboard where I'm sharing fundraising numbers, I want to make sure I'm only including the gift types that my organization includes in reporting. So here I see a list of the different gift types that are available. These should look familiar to you straight from Razor's Edge. And um, I can update this to make sure that I'm only counting the types of things I want counted. So whether you only include pledges in your um, fundraising numbers or you're only including payments or you include gift in the kind or other all those um, particular facets, you can get to that kind of level of detail here to make sure that the numbers you're sharing are accurate. Let me go ahead and move that out of the way. Now, oftentimes when you're looking at a report, you're going to have questions that come up and you're going to want to see more detail. And as I mentioned at the beginning, these dashboards are dynamic so that you can drill down to get more detail about what you're seeing. So for instance, if I'm looking at this number here showing me the total that's ra been raised this month, I might want to pull up a list of the donors behind these numbers. So I can just right click on my widget. I'm going to click that and I'm going to have a new report coming up giving me a detail where I see constituent ID, constituent name, some gift details. I could expand this to show more uh, more detail from the gift, but these are just some, some basic things that are included so that I can get to that constituent level um, and gift level detail that I may want to see. You'll see that it opens up in a separate tab, so when I'm done I can just close it and go back to the view I was just looking at. Um, I can also filter what I'm seeing in a different way. So for instance, if I scroll down just a little bit more, this fund performance uh, pie chart, um, you know, this might be something I take a look at and I might be more interested in this special event number and really want to, to dig into that a little bit more. I can click on that special event slice of the pie and you'll see what happened is that all the other widgets around were updated. So now I'm not necessarily getting results for two of my widgets, but I can get a, a year to date total where fund performance is specific to special events. So now my appeal data is specific to that special events fund. So you are able to modify what you're seeing in that way as well. And when I'm done looking at it, I can clear selection here and I go back and I'm restored to that original view that I had. So let's jump over and let's take a look at another dashboard. I know we have several folks on the call who are using the membership module in Razor's Edge. So I will uh, jump over to our membership dashboard just to give you um, a taste of what's included there. 
So here we have a dashboard giving us key metrics about our membership program. And at a single glance, I can see up-to-date counts on my active members. I can see another metric that's showing me those active members, but just showing me those first-time members, an important number to, to keep track of. And then at the far right, I have uh, my current overall renewal rate, a very important number that I want to keep track of. If I scroll down a little further, I can see a breakdown of my active membership numbers by membership category and broken down by first-time members versus multi-year members. On the right side, I have a pie chart showing me membership uh, Memberships by purchase location, so I can keep track of where those gifts are coming in. And at the very bottom, I have an example that um, kind of links back to something I mentioned at the beginning. Now, earlier I talked about the ability to bring in data from other databases in the JCA Answers. So these last two widgets demonstrate one way that our clients are doing just that. So here I have two widgets that show me information about member visitation. Now, visitation data is stored in a separate ticketing system from the Razor's Edge, but you can bring that together in a single dashboard, and it's something that our clients are doing. So even though this is primarily about Razor's Edge, they're leveraging this dashboard technology to be able to say, you know, give me more about my constituents. If I know visitation information, let's include it. If I know email information, let's include it. Now, sometimes you don't necessarily need a detailed list of, you know, the donors or the constituents who are behind some of these different widgets, but you might want to be able to look at a metric in slightly different ways. And so I'm going to use renewal rate as an example for that. I'm going to click down to some detail on my renewal rate. And so what's popping up is a renewal rate breakdown that's going to give me that metric um, laid out in a few different ways. Um, and, you know, renewal rate is definitely something where it can and should be dissected in a bunch of different ways. So here we have widgets breaking it down by membership category, by um, – uh, where they purchase their membership so that you can see, you know, for instance, people who purchase by the mail have a much higher renewal rate than those who purchase at the ticketing desk. Um, you can look at whether someone's a first-time member or multi-year member or by where that person lives. So, you know, anticipating what your users are going to want to be able to see, you can break down that detail so that you always have access to these various ways of looking at your data. Um, and, you know, keep in mind that things like a renewal rate or retention rate or whether someone's a first-time donor or a uh, multi-year member, these are all things that you're able to do in JCA Answers right out of the box um, from day one. So, Finally, let's take a look at uh, one more dashboard really quickly um, for those folks who are using the prospect module. So here we have a proposal pipeline dashboard that gives you an idea of what might be in um, your pipeline. You can look at your stats by uh, purpose, by status, keep track of how much is coming in versus how much you're asking for um, versus how much you're expecting. Um, the far bottom, we have a solicitor leaderboard to kind of keep track of uh, what proposals have come in by solicitor on the proposal. So, you know, everything that we've looked at here, again, is all accessible on uh, smartphone, tablet, so this is a great way to share information from the Razor's Edge with folks who may not necessarily always have access to the Razor's Edge, such as, you know, major gift officers who might spend a lot of time on the road. At any point in time, I can share a dashboard with other folks. 
So let me show you how we do that. I'm going to hit this button up here where I can then enter in the email address of someone I'd like to share the dashboard with and just hit uh, publish. The other option I have is under um, send email reports, I can actually set up an automatic distribution of my dashboards. So if there's a dashboard that I want sent out every Monday morning, for example, I can set that up and have it automatically go out to people. So when they get that email, they're seeing the latest numbers as of the time um, uh, the email was sent. So again, a great way to share information with, uh, with your users without having to have them log in to Razor's Edge. Now, really quickly, just for the, the benefit of allowing you to see how you add something to a dashboard, I'm going to add one quick widget uh, just to walk you through that. So I'm going to click on this New Widget button and hit Select Data. And let's say I want to look at something that's going to show me a total gift amount. So I entered gift amount in my search box and I'm going to select that. And so right now what has come up is a total gift amount in my entire Razor's Edge database. So that came up pretty quickly. Again, kind of speaking to how quickly and um, efficiently all this data gets processed because it's designed for reporting. That's the goal with answers. So let's say I want to change this. I want to look at a line chart. So I'm going to change that view. And let's say I'll break it down by gift month. So I typed month in my search box. And I'm going to choose month. But you know what? I only want to look at a couple years worth of data. So I'm going to add a filter to this one. Let's see. I'll look at a couple of years worth of data. So I'll select year. And I have a couple of ways that I can uh, I can choose to um, uh, limit this, but I'm just going to go ahead and click off a few years here. I'll do 2013, 2014, and I'll go ahead and break it down by year so I can get those broken out. So now here I have a quick chart that's showing me total gift amount by month, for two years. Let's go ahead and add some labels. And I'll quickly format these for currency so I get that dollar sign. And I'll hit apply. So in about a minute there, we went through and we added a widget to our chart. Um, just as an example of how easy this is to use, how uh, straightforward the interface is. All right. Well, we have walked through a really quick overview of our dashboards um, and what's included. So I want to go ahead and um, take a few minutes now to answer any questions that may have come up. Um, I know we are at the top of the hour, so if you need to drop off, feel free to um, go ahead and sign out. I'll stay on for a few minutes to take care of some of the questions that have come up along the way. Um, but thank you again for your time today, uh, for your interest in JCA Answers, and I hope you all have a great day. Um, now, for those of you who are still on the line, I'll go through a couple of the questions that came up. Um, I had a question come in asking if, um, data is automatically refreshed, or is this something that someone has to process every day? Um, so everything that you see in JCA Answers is fully automated. Um, as part of the installation process, we install um, an application that manages the nightly processing. So what most of our clients do is they uh, set this up to update in the middle of the night. And so we schedule it around any backups that may be happening or other maintenance or big activities on the server. 
um, refresh your data so that when you come in at the start of the day, you're seeing everything that's current in your Razor's Edge database. Um, so all of that's automatic. No one's having to, to, to do it manually. Um, another question uh, about uh, what kind of dashboards are included. Um, so as I was showing you, there are uh, four different types of dashboards that are the sample dashboards that are included when you install answers. And the samples are really designed to highlight the different areas that are immediately available as part of this release of JCA answers. So you can build dashboards on gift information, uh, membership information, proposal information, um, and actions. Um, now that being said, you can also build a single dashboard that has information from all of those different areas. So if you're doing a gift dashboard, you aren't limited to only have gift information on that dashboard. Uh, just, to, just to throw that out there. Um, let me see. Oh, another question. Um, when you share a dashboard, can that person make changes to the dashboard you shared with them? Um, good question. So when you share a dashboard with another user, you have the ability to share it as uh, view only, or you can share it as um, design mode. So if you have something where you only want someone to be able to consume the information, you can set it that way. Um, you can also set it so that someone has um, the ability to make some design changes to the dashboard. Um, but even when they can do that, they won't be able to overwrite and completely um, change the dashboard that you've already shared with them. Your, your original dashboard remains intact. Uh, final question I think I see here. Um, how many users can use JCA Answers? Um, so we have no limits. There's no seat licenses or anything. So you can have an unlimited number of users, um, which again is a great way to share Razor's Edge information without having to tie up a Razor's Edge login. Um, so we've actually had some clients who've been able to reduce the number of their Razor's Edge logins um, because they can share information with folks through JCA Answers. Um, all right, well, I think that wraps all the questions that we received. Um, feel free to contact us if you have any other questions about JCA Answers, our dashboards, or want to hear more about what we're doing with different organizations. Um, I did record this webinar, so if you have other colleagues you would like to share this information with, please let us know and we'd be happy to share the recording with you. So thank you again for your time today. I really appreciate it and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks so much.